Hello, my name is Mr. Chipman, and I am the AP Biology teacher at Murray High School in Murray, Kentucky. And this is video five of me answering the FRQs from the 2023 AP Biology exam. And so we'll be looking at question number five, and in the next video we'll look at question number six. Hopefully you've been able to enjoy questions one, two, three, and four. And uh, take a minute to just look at the other videos on my channel. I have an entire zoology course. I have anatomy and physiology course as well. If these things are something that's interesting to you, subscribe to my channel. Uh, like these videos. All of those things that you would do for other YouTube creators that you want to see succeed. And uh, thank you for just the opportunity to teach you from this video. And so let's do question number five. Ruminants are hoofed are hoofed animals, including cattle and sheep, and they have a unique four-chambered stomach, specialized to digest tough fiber-filled grass. Researchers studying ruminants have in are investigating <clears throat> the morphological and molecular characteristics of different ruminant families in order to determine the evolutionary relationships among families. Cladograms of several ruminant families were constructed based on morphological data in that figure 1a and molecular data figure 1b. Table 1 shows a sample of morphological characteristics present in each family to construct the cladogram in 1a. Okay. And then there's the table and then let's look at our questions. Describe how a scientist would use a comparison of DNA sequences of different organisms to suggest the most likely evolutionary relationships among those organisms. You don't need the prompt for this one. Um, DNA sequences, DNA is composed of A's, T's, C's, and G's, and so uh, a scientist may pick a particular gene that is common to all of the species that are in question and um, just look at the closeness of the DNA sequences, um, the closeness of those A's, T's, C's, and G's. The, the cl more closely those uh, sequences are aligned, the more closely those two organisms are going to be related to one another pretty straightforward. Uh, part B, based on figure one, explain why Bovidae is likely to be more closely related to Moschidae than it is to Giraffidae. So let's look at figure one. And Bovidae, Moschidae, and Giraffidae. <coughs> Alright, um, Bovidae, I guess it's talking about 1B. Yeah, because B is the molecular. Um, okay, it's good. And so I would say that um, Bovidae is more closely related to Moschidae than Giraffidae because Bovidae and Moschidae share a more recent common ancestor, according to figure 1B. And so they would have a a closer DNA, closer molecular uh, structure to one another than uh, Bovidae and Giraffidae did. And that idea, that more recent common ancestor would probably seal the, the correctness of that response. <coughs> Using the template in the space provided for your response, represent the point at which characteristic 1 used in table 1 uh, evolve, evolve by marking an X. Okay, so characteristics. These are morphological characteristics. So we're looking at this one, and uh, tape characteristic one, which is external extra tooth material, shared by Bovidae and Antilocarpidae. And um, so this shared by two sep two organisms that do not have a recent common ancestor. And so, and it said on the lines, so yeah, you can mark it multiple spots. So yeah, it's going to evolve separately from one another. There is a term for that um, that was beyond the scope of this class. I don't remember the exact term. Synapomorphy, maybe? That seems right. Correct me down in the comments. That, but that seems right. Uh, part D, based on figure 1A, explain why a characteristic found only in Cervidae and Bovidae families is more likely evidence of convergent evolution than common ancestry. So this is going to be similar to part C. So Cervidae and Bovidae, yeah, 
And so if it's found only in those, <coughs> that's meaning that the other organisms would, would share this characteristic right here if it was a derived characteristic. And so what I would say is that um, the characteristic that is found in both Cervidae and Bovidae is not a derived characteristic, meaning that it is not a characteristic shared by all the, by the most recent common ancestor and their offspring, but rather it is something that is um, derived later in their evolutionary histories, which is going to point toward an adaptation toward the environment, similar kinds of environments probably that they would be located in and which would cause similar sorts of adaptations. That would be my answer for that. Um, hopefully this was helpful. If it was, again, uh, like the video, tell me down below if this was helpful. Or uh, if you have a discussion question, if you don't agree with me, that's great too. Let's talk about that. Uh, hopefully this was helpful again. Uh, watch video six. It'll be coming along shortly. Thank you.